Hi all, what's up? Patrick again. So as school programs manager for the Westmoreland, one of my responsibilities is to, from time to time, review and update our tours as necessary. And with that in mind, I'm currently working on updating our Pennsylvania history tour. And while researching the topic, I was reminded of how abundant Pennsylvania was, and quite frankly still is, in terms of its natural resources and its wildlife. So much so that well-known naturalists such as John Bartram and John James Audubon spent significant time here studying the state's flora and fauna. Speaking of Audubon, did you know that we feature one of his prints, this one of a Canada J, in our permanent collection? Well, coming across Audubon in my research and knowing that we have one of his prints in our collection, I decided to go a little bit more lighthearted this week and look into a, one of America's most amusing, if not subtle, pranks. In 1818, naturalist Constantine Raffinesque traveled down the Ohio River and throughout the Ohio River Valley, collecting specimens and making observations in what was then the American West. A well-known naturalist with an interest in botany, Raffinesque named thousands of plant genera and species during his career. Earlier in his career, Raffinesque was actually offered an apprenticeship under Dr. Benjamin Rush. You know, that guy who signed the Declaration of Independence and served as treasurer of the U.S. Mint. Kind of a big deal. It should also be noted that Charles Darwin, kind of a big deal in his own right, cited Raffinesque in his seminal work, The Origin of Species. While reputable, he was known in the scientific community to be a bit eccentric and to lack social graces, which in turn turned most people off. In fact, modern author John Jeremiah Sullivan noted that it was quite possible that only fellow naturalist John James Audubon truly enjoyed the eccentric Raffinesque. At one point during his expedition throughout the Ohio River Valley, Raffinesque stayed with Audubon at Audubon's home in Henderson, Kentucky. During the approximately week-long visit, the two naturalists observe nature, they talk, they share notes, they share critiques. Raffinesque, though not particularly interested in birds as much as Audubon was, was interested in the plant life that Audubon often illustrated in his own prints. Raffinesque hoped to use those illustrations to identify new species of plants. It was during this visit that Audubon played a prank that, in my opinion, goes down as one of the best in American history. Audubon described to his friend in detail 28 new species, several rats, several snails, uh, 11 fish, one of which was bulletproof, and one trivalve brachiopod, whatever that is. The only catch? They were all made up. They were real. Why did Audubon do this? Well, some say it's because Audubon had a sense of humor. Others say that he wanted to test his friend's gullibility. Neil Woodman, a curator at the Smithsonian's Natural History Museum, noted that it could have been an act of revenge. Revenge for what? Well, as the story goes, one night Audubon wakes up to a loud commotion coming from the guest bedroom. Concerned for his friend, Audubon investigated only to find Raffinesque running around the room, completely naked, swatting at several bats using Audubon's favorite violin which at this point was completely destroyed because, you know, what else do you use a violin for? Raffinesque was convinced that the bat was a new species and he had to have one for his collection. The bat wasn't a new species and Audubon, to say the least, was not amused. Now, Woodman noted that Audubon may have believed that his friend would have seen the joke and not publish his findings. However, Audubon misjudged his friend's gullibility and his zeal for discovering new species. And while Raffinesque did publish these descriptions, he did cite Audubon as a source for some of them. These animals were part of the scientific record for decades. With friends like these, right? When it was discovered that these animals were indeed fictitious, it actually hurt Audubon's credibility. Audubon himself was accused of making up several birds for his seminal work, The Birds of America. Though it's believed that these paintings were painted from poor representation or from memory, uh, or these birds were extinct during the time that the accusation was made. One's really not certain. What I'm certain about, however, is that there are always consequences for your pranks. 
I hope you enjoyed today's video. Until next time, be safe, be kind, and good luck. Thank you.